So today, we are going to talk about how we can apply the concepts we learned here in our daily life. One interesting example would be to look at how flat owners actually own their properties in Hong Kong. In short, the flat owners co-own the entire building together. As tenants in common, their shares of the building are distinct from each other so that each owner holds a certain percentage of the property, but undivided in the sense that there is no physical demarcation. So a building with seven flat owners will be co-owned by them as tenants in common, with seven distinct yet undivided shares. But we do not really live in the same room with our neighbors. We therefore define exclusive possession of each of our flats in the DMC, the Deed of Mutual Covenant, which is essentially a contract. But technically, we are still co-owning the entire building together. So you may ask, does it really matter? In fact, this co-ownership does lead to several complicated issues that you will understand when you study conveyancing in Land 3. Right now, we will go through a recent example. For the high-speed railway station in West Kowloon, the government has proposed to lease this part of the station to mainland authorities. In fact, it is both mainland and Hong Kong authorities that will co-own the entire station in distinct and undivided shares. And technically, not only this part of the station is involved under the proposal. Of course, this landlord issue is only a small footnote in the saga surrounding co-location arrangements. But you now understand how our concepts learned here could be applied in our everyday life or even to current issues. And of course, the most important will be your part to contribute to the whole learning process by sharing with us your critical analysis of landlord issues. Both you and your classmates will gain a deeper understanding on the topics that we have gone through.